This is Monkey Lily, operated on a few months ago. The electrode sockets are visible on the back of the head. The behavior of the animal seems to be quite normal. Six very fine stainless steel insulated wires are used to construct the electrodes. The wires are put together and cemented with plexiglass. The different tips are three millimeters apart. The electrode is protected with polyethylene cubing and each lead is soldered to a pin of the socket. The long wire at the side is used to anchor the electrode to the skull. This needle electrode is used for the depth of the brain. This plate electrode is used for the surface of the brain. The animal, under general anesthesia, is placed on the Horsley Clark instrument. Special plugs are inserted in the ears. The plane, used to locate the cerebral structures, passes through both ears and both inferior orbital arcs. Observe how the head may rotate in the vertical plane, but cannot rotate horizontally. The head is centered in the instrument. Special clamps for the inferior orbital arcs, fix the head solidly in position. The skin is disinfected and the head is draped for surgery. The operation begins with the section of the skin. The selected point is marked on the skull. And then, using a dental drill, a small hole is made through the bone. Separate bell holes are made for each electrode. With the micro manipulator, the needle electrode is inserted slowly to the predetermined depth. The bare hole is filled with dental cement to hold the electrode in position. When the cement dries, the manipulator is removed, leaving the needle electrode firmly cemented to the bow. The electrode is bent over the skull and further anchorage is provided by passing metallic sutures through burr holes previously made. This anchorage is very solid and prevents the monkey from pulling out the electrode. The small socket is passed through a different incision in the skull and the operation is over. In this case, two electrodes were implanted. The monkey is removed from the instrument and returned to its cage 
to recover from anesthesia and surgery. Implantation of electrodes does not seem to produce any deficit, and the animal look quite normal. With implanted electrodes, any cerebral structure may be stimulated in the awake monkey. The well-known functions of the motor cortex are demonstrated in this monkey. Stimulation of right area 4 produces a turning to the left with extension of the left arm. Stimulation of a similar point in left area 4 produces a turning of the monkey to the right with extension of the right arm. After months of experimentation, some monkeys become tame and friendly. In monkey Alex, some facial paresthesia seems to be induced by electrical stimulation in the neighborhood of the red nucleus. We shall see the effect once more. The small light at the back of the stage indicates the cerebral stimulation. Stimulation is repeated again. In the medulla, there is a point, stimulation of which produces coughing, gagging, and This effect may be used to test anti-emetic drugs. Another monkey, Gili, electrical stimulation of the tectal area evokes eye movements to the right and nystagmus. Stimulation is applied again. A treat for a monkey is a handsome banana, and here we see Helen enjoying her meal. The interest for food, however, stops abruptly as soon as the head of the coded nucleus is electrically stimulated. When stimulation stops, the interest in food resumes. Another banana is given, and the experiment will be repeated. The small light at the back of the stage indicates the moment of stimulation. Now, the stimulation is going on. Once more, the head of the coded nucleus will be stimulated. Observe the expression of this face and the rejection of the food. The brain of the monkey may be electrically stimulated during psychological testing. Here is monkey Ben performing a condition avoidance test. He was trained to run within two seconds to a light flashed on at either side to avoid a shock to the feet. However, when the septal area is stimulated, as indicated now by the yellow light in the center, the monkey fails to respond to the side signal and does not react to the shock to his feet. In the next trial, without cerebral stimulation, 
the animal responds as usual, going to the light signal to his left. Another trial to his right is also correct. Again, the septal area will be stimulated, and again, the monkey fails to respond to the side light and to the shock. The electrical activity of the brain may be recorded in the unanesthetized monkey. To control the animal and to avoid artifacts, the monkey is strapped to a plastic restraining box which allows movement of the head and extremities. The small electrode sockets are connected to the electroencephalograph. As indicated, simultaneous recordings will be taken from the septal area the motor cortex, the anterior hippocampus, and the posterior hippocampus. Now we are observing this spontaneous normal activity. Your hippocampus is now being stimulated with 0.5 milliamperes. Observe some motor effects in the mouth and face of the monkey and the evoke after discharge with greater amplitude in the anterior hippocampus but propagated also to the posterior hippocampus and to the septal area. The activity of motor cortex in channels 3 and 4 is not affected. Five minutes later, the same stimulation is repeated and similar motor and electrical effects are evolved. About 10 minutes later, the motor cortex is electrically stimulated and uh, an epileptic seizure is evoked. We can see the correlation between the motor discharges and the electrical activity. All the leads participate in this after discharge. minutes later, the monkey is sleepy and slow waves are prominent in the motor cortex. In order to study these epileptic discharges with greater detail, the amplification of the recordings is greatly reduced. Continuous electrical activity is barely perceptible. A similar stimulation of the motor cortex is repeated and the epileptic discharge is evolved. Now we see that the electrical after discharge 
affects mainly the motor cortex, to some extent the septal area, and later the anterior hippocampus and also slightly the posterior hippocampus. Seems to belong to a different system. 